Hi there, uh, my name is Jürgen Holland and I'm a concept developer and art director and designer from Norway. In uh, this tutorial I want to show you how you can create some fabulous fabrics. The site Polygon showed me a direction how you can really up your game on uh, fabrics. The idea is that uh, they provide you with um, object ID for your material and um, if you see here and uh, this is a free uh, polygon fabric you can um, it's a fleece fabric you have everything you need here and also an object ID but if you go and see at the older ones that they have made like the fabric wool um, they don't include the object ID because this is based on a picture so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can base your um, your material on a picture and create your own object ID and I'm also going to show you how you can use that with uh, Arnold render so let's get started um, <clears throat> we need yeah, as you see here on the object ID is just based on red and green. So the red is showing one direction and the green is showing another direction. So it's more or less the same principle as a uh, normal map. The object ID is saying which direction the reflection is going and this gives you lots of small and great details. And um, yeah, but uh, as you see here, this is okay, I think, for maybe a fleece pattern where it's the, um, the lines are really strict in the fabric. But for something as, uh, as wool, you see that the, the every other string ha has its own direction and this is what we are going to simulate. For this, I want to use Illustrator. And um, it's just because I know a good way to create grids in Illustrator, so uh, that's why I'm using that. And first off, uh, I need one line over top of the texture. And um, I can do it, and I set it to stroke. And I copy that by holding Alt. And then I use the Blend tool to blend these shapes together. And if I'm done, I guess this, um, yeah, set to one. And if I double click on the Blend tool, set it to a specific step, I just set it in 100 just to make this more visible. Now I'm going to. Uh, match these uh, these threads from the image and uh, I just set that to OK. I think it's a little bit easier to see here if I match that one and set it to maybe 1.5. I think that's the thickness. Go back to the blend tool and now every other every other um, line here is going to be black or be uh, invisible so um, yeah I think it's more or less like that it, it this doesn't really need to be uh, that precise but it's okay and the important thing is that it's seamless of course uh, so this first one has to be blank and then the last one has to be black, so this is going to work more or less. And um, now I'm going to copy this setup. I can uh, add it to its own layer. I had two layers here already. And just use the E button and to set this so this could be at the edge here and just turn off and then I try to find the, the string again 
So this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be thicker. And it's impossible to see. So back in the step specified, uh, I can just set it to 80 so it's a little bit easier to see. And um, yeah, let's look at this. So I think around here is going to be okay. Let's look at this. Uh, maybe I'm going to double click that. Yeah. As long as this has a lot of dynamics, it will look okay for what we are going to do. And now, uh, since this is, um, now we have to cut the first line with the other. So I need to expand this. And I try to expand again to get rid of the, uh, the lines. And I do that for the first layer also. So if I now every other is going to be red and green but um, we are going to go into Photoshop afterwards and I then can uh, colorize this um, this image so I keep it as black and white for now if I then um, just turn off uh, yeah I can turn off the the first layer there and the background sorry if this is a bit weird way of showing it I'm trying to wing this part <laughs> sorry about that and if I come on B, I get it to be on the back here. And this is uh, it's going to match. The, yeah, I have tried to match the um, image in the background there. There, there is. And then I just copy that one. And I can put it on Command B as well. And now uh, the last line I don't need that one and that's the same for the first the second layer uh, and now if I I can blend these two together okay just set it there it has to be filled uh, the background totally fill the background yeah Okay, and what we are going to do, we have to need to subtract the first layer from the other layer. And we can of course do that in Photoshop. And then we are going to offset the, uh, the lines a little bit. So I just copy and create a new and since this is vector, it's going to be pretty easy. So this is 378, was that? No, 372. And uh, 372. And it's going to be RGB and 8 bit. Or maybe I just going to set it to uh, 16 bits. Then I add that as a smart object. It's a bit smaller than uh, the plane. Copy the first one, copy the second one. Of 
course this can be done in so many different ways I just did this uh, the other day so I wanted to show you and then this can be turned into a rest drive I know that this is not uh, totally the best way to do it but uh, as long as I'm winging it I just created a mask if you have a mask with a black and white image uh, if you hit command on that mask it selects every other line so now I can go into the and rasterize this and now I have a selection with every other line of course and if I then go into offset I need an offset that uh, is possible to see so let's uh, not hor horizontal but in vertical and now I'm offsetting this to be matching the more or less the wool pattern and then we have uh, every other string of wool pattern we need more variety in this setup so I can use the the original wool uh, fabric and I'm going to use the levels to just turn this into a lot of small details and strings and clamp it really hard I can also turn this into black and white and if I copy that and add that to the setup I can use the blending mode difference then I got all some black and some white details into the setup I see that uh, this has to be uh, even more clamped black and white so now if I hit command shift E I can skew the levels and make this totally black and white on and off and then I can <coughs> use the gradient map and in the gradient map I need a hundred percent red and a hundred percent green and then we have a object ID for the wool fabric and now I just gonna save this and I'm gonna show you how you can use that in Cinema 4D and Arnold render and since this is 16-bit I save it as a PNG yeah in Cinema 4D I create a new Arnold uh, standard surface texture this is the new standard after the version 5 of Arnold render I can just add a width on the base to 1 and then I'm gonna add the uh, wool fabric I'm gonna use the wool uh, and also I'm gonna use the um, um, reflection, no, no, the glossy map and um, the uh, no so the color I connect that to the color in the standard surface I the gloss is totally wrong since this uh, setup is using roughness maps so it, our roughness map needs some simple way to turn that around and make it correct I add a ramp float I add it to the roughness and I can click on the ramp image here and just flip horizontally then I have a normal and I can use the normal map and add it to the input and put it into the normal in geometry <coughs> 
no, uh, this is a bit wrong. First off, okay, we have this setup, and we're going to use the uh, the uh, roughness, but it's not the same as, w but not in the standard way. So into the standard surface, I turn off the specular, and then then go into coat, and here is the coat is a second specular map that is supposed to be on top of things like uh, for a car for instance if you have lacquer that would be a coating and we turn the weight on the coat up to one and then I'm going to use the roughness map that I created from the gloss map into the co coat roughness and now I'm going to introduce the object ID and here it is and I'm going to add that to the setup and the object ID is going to be plugged into the normal in the coating and um, in the normal uh, usually you use things like if you want f uh, flakes and sparkles for instance in snow some sparkling highlights this is the way to go and of course then you use the flake flakes uh, node for that one and yeah let's look at this and uh, see how in comparison to uh, one without the um, without the object ID so uh, the first one is without width yes check that so now mess that this up so that's the first one and width and oh shit <laughs> without <coughs> just delete it so it's really clear and now I need some lights and I set it up with a quad light in the middle here and the quad lights need a sample on three and I can also maybe uh, Do it like this. Let's look at it. This needs more light. So you can see here. If I go into, they look more or less the same in this setup. But you can see a little bit of difference. And what is really happening? You get. <coughs> more contrast into the one with the object ID. It's more or less you get extra details you, you didn't have there in the first place. And that's the real beauty. And it's, it gives so much life into the model. And it's all the small details, all the micro details that really makes it shine. And if you see here, you can see that it has this more convincing pattern in the uh, surface if you really want the extra details and uh, your renders will be a little bit more detailed a little bit more convincing so uh, good luck and uh, goodbye